Mr. Speaker, earlier today, I laid before the House of Assembly the Special Development Order titled the Riddles Bay Ward Parish Special Development Order 2020 SDO. This SDO comes at a time when the island is reeling from the unprecedented economic downturn due to COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, in accordance with Section 15 of the Development and Planning Act 1974, the order will grant subdivision approval for the purposes of residential development and also to create new conservation land. Specifically, a total of 18 vacant lots will be approved, each to be developed with a detached house and additionally, two significantly sized vacant conservation lots will be approved to be comprehensively planted and restored, which will provide a number of environmental and public benefits. Such benefits are to include the reestablishment of diverse native and endemic ecosystems, as well as opportunities for passive recreational use. Mr. Speaker, I am acutely aware of the developers' enthusiasm to proceed with this project. And to this end, I am pleased to confirm that remediation and initial planting work have already begun on the site for the conservation areas. Mr. Speaker, the preparation of this order was preceded by the subdivision application process by the Department of Planning. This project has undergone an exhaustive environmental analysis and scrutiny. The application submission included an environmental impact statement and conservation management plan by virtue of the statutory objection process defined in the Development and Planning Act 1974. This application was afforded public scrutiny. The submission details were comprehensively reviewed by technical officers of the Department of Planning and environment and natural resources, as well as the non-governmental organizations and members of the community. Mr. Speaker, to specify the details of the scheme developers, the developer proposes to convert approximately 25% or 23 acres of the total acreage of Riddles Bay to residential lots, while at the same time, converting the remaining 75 75% of the total acreage, 64 acres, to publicly accessible conservation areas. Mr. Speaker, the additional 64 acres of conservation land is significant contributing element of the scheme. The two conservation lots are split into four categories, including nature reserve, open space, recreation, and woodland. Notably, the overall size of this conservation area exceeds the size of the majority of government nature reserves and or national parks on the island. Mr. Speaker, the creation of such, a conserva such conservation lands will be achieved by way of conditions appended to the order requiring the implementation of a conservation management plan, a plan which details the necessary restorative works and planting works together with the financial plan for delivery and subsequent maintenance thereof. Mr. Speaker, against the backdrop of the current challenges being faced by our community, I am certainly proud to introduce such a scheme that represents a significant ecological and social gain for the island. Further, this is one of the largest single luxury developments proposed in some time. It has undoubtedly tremendous potential to inject an estimated $75 million capital investment into the economy, provide as much a much needed stimulus to various business sectors, including construction and landscaping, real estate and other retail service industries, and most importantly, provide jobs for communities. Mr. Speaker, 
I would like to take this, the opportunity at this time to thank the developer for undertaking such a significant venture to create a luxury development while creating valuable conservation land for the benefit of the community. We applaud the developers for continuing to believe in Bermuda as a sound and promising jurisdiction in which to invest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.